Hello! In the previous lecture, we decided that in this course we will talk about the how level of Hazen-Sals model. Let's consider where works at this level exist in the overall process of design. As an illustration, we will consider goal-directed design process applied for design a new product. Of course, there are alternatives to this design process. For instance, contextual design, Stanford D schools design thinking process, TU Delft approach to design, etc. But to illustrate my thought, I choose the goal-directed design process. It's quite popular and suitable for designing both consumer and enterprise mobile applications. And importantly, it combines work from all three levels of Mark Hazen Sales model. The goal directed design postulates a number of features. First, design as a product definition means that work on the design of the product plays a balancing role, aligning the needs of users with business needs and taking into account limitations of technology. Design, which is obtained as a result, provides true product definition. In everyday practice of design agency called Krupa, whose staff proposed the goal-directed design process. Designers act as user researchers, diving into the life of users to obtain first-hand information has a positive effect on the design work. It should be noted that neither the first nor the second feature requires only one person to perform work at all levels. On the contrary, one of the principles of human-centered design states the need to use the power of multidisciplinary team. Projects benefit from additional creativity and ideas from interaction and collaboration of team members who collectively have an extensive skill base. The idea here is to strike a balance in the breadth of specialization of team members. It should not be highly specialized professionals and magic UX unicorns that can do everything. Another feature of the process is a special attention to the transition from research to design. The process emphasizes the importance of understanding user goals, their modeling, using scenarios as a design mean to combine and convey product ideas to the design phase on the how level. I will say more about it later, but for now let's look at each step of the process. As you already know, the wire level is associated with the identification of needs involved in a certain activity. Some of these needs can be chosen as a problem which a product helps to solve. The process of the goal-directed design obligates us to make sure that the problem really exists, but why? The first principle of human-centered design states that the design is based upon an explicit understanding of users, tasks, and environments. Even if we are a part of the product target audience, it does not mean that the rest of the target audience see the problem the same way. Some aspects of the problem may be different for different users. For example, despite the fact that all users of uh, an alarm clock app want to wake up in a certain time, such feature as a repeat is absolutely useless for people with unstable schedule. This example is trivial, but it shows the importance of understanding the details in the investigation of the problem. Where can we get these details? Human activity does not occur in a vacuum, but in a context or a situation. Since we are talking about the interaction between a human and a mobile app, this situation has a very specific title, context of use. 
The context of use is extremely complex and includes all the relevant features of the surrounding world. These features are related to categories such as physical environment, use mobile device, users' tasks, goals, and many others. We will discuss in detail what is included in the context of use a little later on this week. Now it's important for you to understand the following. Context of use influences decisions that you will make in the course of the design process. Some features of the context of use influence only design decisions on the how level. For instance, experience of an Android users with different applications on this operating system. Some features of the context of use influence on the decisions on the what level. For instance, the example discussed earlier with the repeat function and unstable schedule of the users. But most features of the usage context influence decisions at both levels. In some situations, it's possible to conduct research aimed at getting directions to create innovative solutions. It's usually called product research. In this situation, we more often hear words like needs, emotions, meaning, etc. In some situations, it's possible to conduct research which aims to design usable and accessible solutions. They are often referred as usability studies. In this situation, we most often hear words such as task and domain knowledge, mental models, usability problems, etc. But in the situation of creating a new product, we pursue both purposes at the same time. The purpose of research is changing our point of view, but we study the same usage context of our future application. We can combine both types of research, and it is what the goal-directed design implies. Research conducted at the outset should be as open as possible. To investigate the context of use, a variety of methods are used some of which are interviews, focus groups, observations, participatory design methods, and so on. Some of them we will discuss in the second week of this course. As I mentioned earlier, one of the goal-directed design process features is the special attention to the transition from research to design. This transition goes through a modeling phase. One of the models used in the design process, called a persona, a composite user archetype that represents distinct groupings of behaviors, attitudes, and goals drawn up on the basis of user search results. Each persona has its own name and even a photo. This is done in order to invoke empathy of all team members involved in the design process. Later on in the process, personas are used for generating new product ideas, prioritizing features, selecting product metrics, designing interactions, evaluating usability, and so on. It's much easier to carry out all these tasks imagining specific people. All personas should include description of their motives. Motivation refers to not only what a user wants to do, that are end goals, but also what the user wants to feel, experience goals, and whom the user wants to be, uh, life goals. The slide shows examples of the end goal and the experience goal. Live goals describe a persona's long-term desires, motivations, and self-image attributes, which cause the persona to connect with the product. The relevant example of the live goal would be to be healthy. Moving between these types of goals, 
helps to change the point of view and accordingly offer a variety of product ideas. In accordance with Mark Hazenthal's conclusions, a focus only on end goals in the design process leads to overly practical solutions. Focusing on experience and life goals leads to products that are sensitive to particularities of human experiences. Personas is not the only type of model that can be used within the goal directed design process. For a description of other features of the usage context, models such as concept maps, user journey maps, uh, different workflow diagrams, and more can be used. The use of models in the design process will be considered by the end of this week. Here I have to stop. We will continue discussing the goal-directed design process in the next lecture. Thank you.